Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, Joe and I have read the Red Room. Well, you've read the Red Room, right? I, I did, and I even I, I picked up a physical copy of it at uh, Bailey's Comics here on Long Island because uh, uh, Fourth World, the real big shop out here, uh, overordered and still sold out by Saturday. Uh, it, yeah. It's, you know, it's sold out uh, here in the Seattle area as well. Um, I had to go to a shop up on Capitol Hill that I normally go to uh, in order to, to pull it in. But um, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it did really well. But on that topic, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, this is a Fantagraphics book. Mm -hmm. And I went looking on their website and had a, a really hard time finding it there. Like it, it, was, uh, it was weirdly buried in the, uh, in, the, in the site, which I thought was so surprising given you know, the, the buzz behind the book. Yeah, no, um, my, my brother, uh, James, uh, pre-ordered it through Fantagraphics website and has still not, as of this recording on Tuesday, uh, six days after it came out to shops, gotten his copy. Yeah, it, it was, it's weird to me. If you go to like the new releases and then anyway, this is kind of all of us aside to this book. If you go to the new releases, it's on the second page. Um, kind of buried down on the, on the, on the it's just, it's just strange to me. Um, no. Meanwhile, Comixology has been featuring it from time to time. And of course, uh, Ed Piscor and cartoonist K Fabe is a, is a great channel. And I think yeah. that's a lot of promotion for sure. What do you think about the book? You know, um, one thing I, I gotta say, um, for this, you're definitely getting uh, your bang for your buck. It's seven dollars for sixty four pages. You're, it's basically three issues worth mm -hmm. uh, for the price of less than two at this day and age. I mean, granted, it is black and white, but yeah, I uh, I enjoyed it. It felt like two issues. Mm -hmm. that yes. you're kinda, you, you were getting here. And, and a lot of people already may have seen this on uh, uh, Ed Piscor's Patreon. Uh, he's been posting the, mm -hmm. the pages uh, so people could read it that way. Um, it, so this also pushes against that notion of, oh, if you put stuff di up digitally, no one's going to buy it because this is certainly far and away the highest selling floppy that Fantagraphics has probably put out in, in a while, I would imagine. They don't put that out that yeah. many floppies, yeah. but uh, I'm sure it's doing uh, very well. Uh, to, to give you an idea, uh, Fourth World so seemed to sell through more copies of Red Room than Heroes Reborn. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. Same same story here. Yeah, uh, in Seattle, the uh, Golden Age Collectible Shop, which is kind of the biggest in Seattle, it's the, mm -hmm. the grandfather of them. Uh, they sold out as well, and and he was concerned that he was overordering it. Was wondering if uh, you know maybe he was. Um, he was he was being influenced too much by the popularity of the YouTube channel and it was yeah. out there and it's like I, I don't know if I'll move all these but uh, he was gone I think he said in his first day yeah and they were and, and plenty of heroes were born and many other titles plenty of Batman actually still up <laughs> yeah uh, that was the same sort of thing I, I was seeing at, at fourth world and uh, and yeah uh, they very much said that it was um, they over ordered Red Room and it sold out quick and they under ordered heroes reborn they ordered less yeah, and they thought they should to play it safe, and they still had uh, more than enough to, you know, probably seriously injure someone if it fell on them. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's the right way to assess uh, comics, like our like our discussion with uh, Bill Willingham. It's it's it, would it protect you from a bullet? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you there were probably enough copies of Heroes Reborn that I don't know if it. Uh, if it could have gone, a bullet could have gone through all of them. But um, comics and, with armor, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that was definitely, uh, you know, I, I hope a wake up call for uh, publishers. Um, yeah, I mean, it also this comic just for people to reference. We'll get into it a little bit. It, this comic is um, definitely for adults. Like, yes, you know, definitely. Um, you would you would not want to sell if you're you're a comic shop. You wouldn't want to sell it to somebody who's a, a younger adult. Uh, you know, if you were selling it to somebody under the age of eighteen, you might wonder if a parent was going to come back on you. Um, it, it's definitely you know mature titles struggle in a shop to some extent. Yeah. You are limiting your audience, um, but none of that seemed to matter here. And uh, sixty four pages, and this is a twelve issue series we're in for. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, this is, uh, and uh, who knows, maybe more. It seems like <laughs> if, if he keeps making money off, it'll keep doing it. So I would hope so. I mean, so half of 10 of swords in, in length we're getting. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so 64 pages. Uh, it is like I said, it, it, my take on this when I read this is it, it reminded me very forcefully of, uh, uh, crumb and titles of that genre. It was a pulpy kind of 70s yeah. feel to it. Uh, that was by intent, right? That that was by intent. It, and uh, I was feeling a lot of uh, derf yeah. in, in this while I was reading it. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely intentional. Um, Ed, uh, you know, prior to this, I mean, obviously he's done stuff like WYSIWYG and, and stuff like that earlier, um, Hip Hop Family Tree. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the X-Men Grand Design. Like, like he he has a knack for uh, being able to ape off certain styles to to fit something uh, a project. Uh, so for X Men Grand Design, he was it, it's a very different style mm -hmm. uh, to to sort of get that feel uh, for it to sort of feel like old timey kind of superhero comics to to an extent, but it still had that indie feel. You know, there's I, I think he, you know you're he was probably pulling in a lot of like early Barry Windsor Smith and Alex yeah. Toth and stuff like that for, for that project. But, but here, yeah, very crumb, very underground comics. And, and that's part of why I was thinking like Durf, like that, like, you know, grimy kind of stuff. Well, one thing that stood out to me, that's not, it's not entirely fair, but because of of the coloring of, of the actual art and mm -hmm. and the griminess of it, which I really liked, the lettering and the word balloons being so bright white and popping out like that, I thought took away. I agree. Um, it has a. It, it really nails this kind of uh, uh, not nostalgia. That's the wrong word, but it, it just it makes you feel like a product of a, of a certain time, maybe a, a kind of an undefined time. And word balloons did feel wrong on some extent, or it, it, it did yeah. a little bit. But uh, small, yeah. small criticism for Absolutely, a yeah. pretty solid book. Oh yeah, no, it's a, it's a very solid. Like, like he promised, it was a one and done kind of thing, mm -hmm. and each yep. one is going to be self-contained within this world. Mm -hmm. um, so that all worked. I mean, yeah, there was, um, yeah, very disgusting. Uh, there's a yeah, lot of very right gross things in this um it, it the story uh, we'll get all the criticisms out at once because i really did enjoy this and i think yeah. the book if you're if you're willing to take some some gruesomeness uh this is a book to pick up by by far and especially yeah, absolutely of comics um the the story itself i mean on the surface we've seen this story before this mm -hmm. idea of, of kind of uh uh webcam murders and i not to spoil it but i mean just just aspects of this plot you've definitely seen in other films it, it actually reminded me of a lot of kind of 80s horror films um to that extent yeah uh mm -hmm. like uh haunted ween it reminded me of that, like this early '90s. I think it was early '90s horror movie. Yeah. I've actually seen that on the big screen, and that was a, a guy who breaks into a haunted house and is actually murdering the people uh, in, in in front of them, and they don't realize it. So, th like, that's like a bit of a precursor to to something like this. Yeah, it's it's a story that on the surface you've you've seen or read before. But it's told in a not, not just an entertaining way. Again, very gruesome, but it is it's told in a, a both a familiar, comfortable, but entertaining and different. It, it it does give you new things. It does tell the story in unique style to Piscor, um, but it's comfortable in the sense that you can, you can fit right in. Well, I don't know if that's the right word, but you could you could you could understand this world immediately when you start reading. Yeah. Uh, do you think this uh, the, part of the commentary? And I'm seeing different reviews that say you know this is a this is a, 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 a good, timely commentary on social media and the internet and everything else. I, I didn't feel like we were getting hit over the head with a social message. Did you? No, I, I, I wasn't feeling that uh, from it. I, it. I was getting, like, it's very clear that uh, Ed has a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. um, you know, even though it's the dark web, it's very much the comments because there's pages of, you know, like stills from like a live stream and, yeah. you know, people talking in the chat and it's very, it, it's, it's a live chat in, in a YouTube channel. It's, it yes. really uh, does come off that way. 
I wish some of those layouts were a little more dynamic because the a lot of the other pages I, I think really popped and there's a lot going on, but sometimes the story would slow a little too much yep. uh, in the Quite pages a, that yeah were doing that. And I kind of wish that, like I don't think there was necessarily a better way to do that. And again, this is just nitpicking, but yeah. Well, I wonder for the main audience, um, you and I obviously have done live streams, we do these shows, we, you've done many other shows. We've been in this kind of world, which which Ed is clearly drawing from, from his channel. Sure. Um, but for people who are picking this comic up who aren't exposed to that stuff, which is still the majority, I think it's it's still the majority of readers probably buying this are you know not hanging out in live streams all the time. For sure, yeah. Maybe it comes across a little bit more unique to to that audience. Yeah, no, it, it it absolutely would. And again, if if people didn't read a lot of the other like underground sort of comics, uh, it, you know, like comics from the black and white boom in the mm-hmm. '80s, it might not, you know, it might stand out more in in sort of that way. You might miss some of the subtleties and some of the, uh, yeah, you know, callbacks to to that era. But but yeah, I mean. You know, again, it's it's got all the you know the equivalence of your super chats and all that with your mm-hmm. you, you know giving it Bitcoin and that's all yep. Bitcoin and and this and that like it's it's the the social commentary comes in with m- more like Bitcoin that it's hard yep. to trace and yes. and like look at all these awful things that can that can happen from that. I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the um, the point necessarily no. but it didn't feel like uh it, this comic was trying to teach you about the dangers of the internet it was trying to yeah. tell you kind of this horror story within this world like i at no point did i was reading this going and this is why we've got to get rid of bitcoin it didn't it didn't come across that way to me yeah D- did you uh was the violence over the top for you I, that that's uh, i i didn't mind it um it's very gruesome um but yeah. i again i've seen some people comment that uh they weren't expecting it, and it was so over the top that you became numb to the violence. But I, I always felt like the violence served the story fairly nicely to what he was trying to put across. I, it, it, it was gratuitous, but it's intentionally gratuitous. Sure. Yeah, I mean, because of that, you, you know, it, it wasn't really like, I don't know, like that kind of edginess and all that. Like, it's it's interesting art, but like, it's not, it was nothing that really made me think like, oh, uh, this mm-hmm. is this is too much. It's like no. It's, yeah. 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 Anyone like that? It's like then I don't know how uh, how you heard of it and thought to pick it up without <laughs> under understanding it. I mean, it's you know, murder on the dark web for fun and profit is is on the cover. Yes. Uh, there there's been no hiding what, no. what what this book is. So anyone who's been like, I can't believe it's this file. That's uh, that's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the, yeah. The, if if any, the, the title overwarns on the front what you're in for. Like, there's no, there's there's yeah. absolutely no surprises. There's multiple. I mean, see, rivers of gore is printed on the cover. So you and and you get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. I have the standard cover. I think the standard cover is great. Yes. Um, you know, and yeah, banned in five countries. Like all all that stuff to to add to the flavor yeah. text of it, but. But yeah, I, I think um, some of the stuff that works is uh, this like father who who's uh, mm-hmm. uh, who's been a killer and is brought in like that. That's a big part of this uh, plot, especially the second half. Yes. But um, there's there there's something interesting going on there where it's like um, he's uh, he's a pro that's done this before is sort of recruited into this. And um, just because he, he was good at this doesn't mean it's going to translate right away to YouTube, which, you know, makes you think of like, um, it, you know, some, you know, that, that applies to comic artists and writers who are starting YouTube channels. I agree. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think that was in, intentionally there. Um, you have, uh, you know, there, there's stuff that I, I think speaks to people of this idea that this guy uh, could never be himself around like his wife and kid. And now he has this outlet and it's this guy who has a family, but it's like these people know the real him and are, you yes. know, br- bring him in and, and, and doing this. And th- th- there's something there to, to that, mm-hmm. that I think elevates the story beyond where it could have been. It's, it's a complex story. It's a, um, 
there there is a lot of depth to that I, I think you you're not going to get a comic with just kind of uh, slasher kind of panels and that's going to be all you have there there is this uh, character development that's going on there's kind of this this bigger depth to, to some of the interaction that's taking place it's you know you do need to read the comic you know it's it's, it's, it's all sound like dumb things you, you actually have to read the words and uh, or you will miss the comic so right <laughs> crazy it's a uh, who, who knew um i know I, I i'm excited to see where this goes i so 12 issues like i said he's got it up on patreon and uh it's it's it, this is a fun little comic it it continues to feel like uh, this is something that y- you there's a lot of complaints about corporate comics and things all feeling kind of the same and everything else um but yet stuff like this comes out on a fairly regular basis it gives you something yeah. very, very different so yeah, absolutely. It's very different. If you're tired, uh, you, you know, if you if you dislike uh, kind of this this very almost paint by numbers uh, big two event type stories, this is going to be a good antidote for that, for sure. Yeah. Um, what about people who who kind of read a lot of comics in the seventies and eighties? They're they're saying comics aren't like that anymore. Do you think this this kind of fulfills that as well for them? Um, maybe a little bit. I, it's this is gonna fulfill a little bit in terms of if you liked let's say um you know, like you're saying before some of that uh mm-hmm. 80s black and white boom if you if you like stuff from like Durf and mm-hmm. uh, you know Daniel Klaus and you know Crumb and, and some of that grittier uh you know raw uh kind of stuff I, I think this does uh, scratch a certain itch that you can't get uh, other places right now. Mm-hmm. So. It, it does. I, I and now going forward, um, issues two and three are up for pre-order. You can mm-hmm. get them. They they move the price down to three ninety nine, so they're smaller books, but you're you're yeah. back uh, cheap. But I mean, this is a great deal. I think for your money, um, you know, seven bucks for sixty four pages, and then kind of this ongoing series at four bucks. It's uh, yeah. I, I there's there's nothing. <laughs> it's it's a it's a there's no barrier at that point i think it's, no. it's good stuff so no it's nice it doesn't tie into anything there's no events uh <laughs> linking this together there there's none of that so this and, is nice and everything done by ed writing art pencils inks colors everything this is yeah. all ed. So. yeah no ed ed does it all uh and and, and yeah it's it's great uh, other than some of the variant covers uh mm-hmm. that some stores are getting but and, and since they're all one and dones if you miss an issue it's not the end of the world uh yeah. you can pick up issue three if that comes out even if they're out of issue two and get issue two later and you'll be fine so that's all good i think it's uh it's a, it's a good comic so i definitely recommend here and i, I think it, 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 assuming you're into kind of that pulpy type comic feel. I think you're, you're going to enjoy yourself and yeah. it's something very different. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I would uh, recommend this for anyone into that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely don't get it for your kids. I, I don't know who's getting uh, a lot of fanographic stuff for their kids, <laughs> unless they're like more you know, reprints of like Carl Bark stuff, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Idiots is the answer there. Yeah. Idiots are getting this for your kids. So don't be, yeah. don't be an idiot. So, uh, but yeah, Get it for yourself and enjoy it. And uh, Joe, thank you very much. This is this is fun. No problem. This was a good time. All right.